All right, I'm going to give my bit on uh, part two of all things air. And uh, on this video, I'm going to uh, concentrate on SSD or solid state uh, drives. And basically, uh, these have to do with the MacBook Air, and uh, the SSD is part of the most expensive line of the MacBook Air. And uh, obviously, we'll give the um, ultra compact a, a huge performance boost in some areas and in some areas not so much against conventional hard drives. Now I, I, I recall watching a video um, where they were doing a boot up comparison and then they launching a, a bunch of applications and so forth. And I continually see a, um, a publishing of that video. However there's a catch to that. While the initial boot up and the first launch of all applications the SSD performed well the actual analysts and uh, organization that was putting out these videos had a third video that has not been published which showed the MacBook Air under the conventional hard drive equaling the same performance on all applications launch after memory has taken over in, in essence when you when they launched all the applications it went through its first write but once OS X has, has aggressively cached everything, their words aggressively cached uh, was used in the article, um, the performance of the, of the hard drive versus the SSD was, was really marginal and, 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 and fairly equal. So basically while those videos did show a faster boot up time and initial load of all the applications in the dock, um, you have a very strong argument that will say, well fine, uh, all my initial loads are going to be faster on this SSD but when it comes and like the third video showed once it's already cached and you're starting to use more memory than drive your performance is then back to whatever the power of the CPU and the RAM is within within the actual computer um, so you're going to go back and have to then delineate well when is when is the drive actually being accessed and when is it not and what is strictly reserved on CPU processing and RAM processing so on and so forth so these are things to consider so SSD of course like I said before will have its its benefits and then other times it won't and this is where I'm going to get into random and sequential reads and writes and if you anyone can go and look at, at some of these statistics um, you can certainly um, google it uh, SSD versus any conventional. Uh, there are some that went, had it going up against the Raptor X's and so on and so forth. Now, um, what is sequential in random read and writes? Well, I'm going to put up on the screen on the difference between the two. Sequential reads and writes, your conventional hard drives are going to outperform the solid state. And on the random reads and writes, the solid state is, is this going to blow the conventional hard drive out of the water. Now, a sequential read and write is basically you have these, let's, we'll just call them sectors, okay, and it's going to sequ sequentially go from one to the next 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 to the next, whether it's reading or writing. Random means within your sectors that you have, it's going to go maybe block three, block two, block five, block one, so on and so forth. So your SSD is going to kill the uh, conventional drive uh, on the random, but it will not outperform on a sequential read and write. Now, it's not going to be on every case, but on a majority of cases, it will not outperform on sequential reads and writes. Well, what, what usually is a sequential read and write? Compiling, exporting movies, uh, anything that requires a constant read and write uh, to the drive, um, in, a, in, a, in a sequential order, which uh, if you're exporting to QuickTime is another example. Anything of that nature is going to be a sequential use of the drive. And that is where the solid state will not outperform the conventional. Now, on random accessing, which could be just doing things here or there, or you're opening email, uh, saving a document, uh, have multiple applications open, you're going to uh, kill the uh, 
uh, performance of the conventional drive if you had a, a solid state. Now the question is, all right, they put this technology in the MacBook. It's not it's not exclusive to Apple, uh, but it's there, and and Apple's competitors use it. Is the cost difference between your conventional and I will say the conventional drive in the MacBook Air is not is not really the best RPMs out there. Some of its competitors, while they may not be as exactly thin, uh, they're not going to be uh, that much difference in terms of thinness or weight, have higher RPM drives. So, um, but Apple just chose to go with something that they've already actually established a technology for and deployed it within the MacBook Air. So, I mean, there's not really nothing, uh, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, uh, just basically an observation. So, if you, a consumer, decide that, well, I'm going to spend X amount of dollars to be able to get uh, this much more performance. Okay, you can do so. Now the argument standing, oh, the, the MacBook Air is going to just blow away the MacBook. Well, it depends on what you use it. Uh, depends on what you use it for. If you're going to bring that argument in, then you also have to include its limitations, and that's going to be on later vids when I'm talking about throughput and uh, some of the criticisms that I will further back up with with data on on relying solely on Wi-Fi, so on and so forth and exclusion of uh, the FireWire port. But as, as far as SSD is concerned, you already are within a certain factor. Um, and a consumer, whatever they may be, so far from the articles I'm reading, it's uh, the MacBook Air is, is supposedly for travels, travelers of a, like VPs, very, uh, they're high executives that can afford it so far. Um, so, like, like I said on for my first vid, we'll see on what, what the uh, first quarter of sales will bring and so on and so forth. But on SS, on, on the solid state versus a conventional, I wanted to uh, lay the groundwork on that and show that performance will not always be better on a solid state. And um, there are other, other limitations that, um, lim there are limitations of uh, within flash memory as it is and but they're they're uh, constantly advancing the technology and there's no need to to rehash that um, but I thought I'd go ahead and define uh, and, and, and clear the air of well what are you going to get with SSD what is sequential and random reads and writes f to basically expose the pros and cons of SSD technology thanks for watching